thyroid hormones usually get reported in a regular lab sleep with reference ranges, a minimum range and a maximum range, and outside of which people tend to think that they are abnormal, either high or low. And most doctors, primary doctors, tend to treat for whenever our levels fall outside this reference range. So we started looking at huge numbers of people both within Montefiore and national and a national level in the National Health Nutrition and Examination Survey and Haines database and we found that um, in fact these reference range limits change with age and change with different races. So I might have a TSH reference range in the 0 0.3 to 4.5 range, but a, an 80-year-old white person might have a reference range that's basically completely different than mine. And if we don't pay attention to that, we might misclassify people as having abnormal thyroid hormones just because they don't fall within the laboratory reference range, which is a reference range that's applied for everybody in the in the communities. TSH usually is a hormone that we make in the pituitary gland and stimulates the thyroid gland and basically this hormone, the higher it is, the lower the thyroid hormones are. So it's an opposite uh, relationship and that's why it's so difficult to understand. So the TSH reference range goes up as we age and we prove that in people from the age of 10 years of age until the age of 90 or 100 years of age. And basically, it does go up the reference range as we age, and it's higher in whites compared to blacks. Um, and that's actually established not only at our institution, but also at a national level and in other populations has been replicated as well. So it's not that it, it's a, something of the Bronx alone. It's not specific to the Bronx. It's basically we find this in many, many populations. And, and so the implication of that is that um, usually we get elderly people in their 60s, 70s and 80s with a, uh, with a uh, report from their doctor saying that they have minimally elevated TSH levels and what that means is that probably their thyroid hormones are low and that probably they need thyroid replacement medication. So they come to us saying, okay, are you going to give me the thyroid hormone? And we look at them a little bit closer and we actually decide whether these are the people who actually are normal people without any thyroid condition who in fact fall within their own age and race specific reference range and may not need any thyroid medication or thyroid supplementation therapy. Some studies show that when we physicians prescribe thyroid hormone for the first time, we end up over treating 40% of patients and over treatment of the ones that we prescribe thyroid hormones to. And over treatment basically manifests itself as palpitations. Uh, too much thyroid hormone may cause palpitations and over a long period of time it can cause osteoporosis. So it can damage our bones, debilitate our bone density. So um, basically we don't want to over treat, we don't want to under treat either. Um, so we try to find the balance as well, but more interesting than that, there are studies who basically find people who fall outside this reference range, but people don't do anything about them. And up to 27 to 50% of these people go down to the normal range again within five years of following them. So we don't necessarily need to do anything about them. So there are studies showing that some people regress to the normal range by themselves.